There's loads of decisions to talk about tonight. And we've already mentioned the penalties. There's also a red card that should have been in the Bournemouth game that I want some opinions on, on Donny van der Beek as well, that had a knee, it practically had his leg broke, uh, cruciate ligament damage without a shadow of a doubt after what went on there. But I want your thoughts and I want your feelings. Arsenal drop points at home for the first time this season. The title race, of course, not dashed. They still have right now an eight-point lead. They've actually gained another point on Man City. Man City need to beat Chelsea on Thursday night to capitalize. But I know Arsenal fans out there are going to be frustrated. I know Arsenal fans out there are going to be annoyed at the refereeing decisions. I can see it all over my timeline. I'm reading it now. So, of course, I want your thoughts and I want your feelings on it. The best football community in the world will be prioritizing the Super Chats. We'll be prioritizing the member chats as best we can as well. We'll be having uh, Brandon, KJ and others to join us soon all on the show. So bear with us. We'll be getting them up. We're getting the stills up for the penalty shouts as well in a few moments time. Eight points clear is what Gunnar Ross says. Terry, explain the rules of VAR to intervene and get that uh, novice on the screen. Listen, I, I personally, I'm being honest with you, I don't quite understand how penalties haven't been given tonight. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't quite understand it. The one at the end, I mean, I saw a free kick given. And I want to say it was in last night's game when a player turned his body in and hit his arm. Outside the box, of course. Turned his body in, hit his arm outside the box, and, and it was given as a free kick. So I don't understand how late on in the game, a player turns his body, moves his arm out. It clearly strikes his arm, as you could see. And this is not given. That, that's a shocker for me. It's legitimately a shocker. I cannot believe this penalty wasn't given at the death. And I did hear Gary Neville say, well, I'd be, I feel disappointed to concede it. I'm like, yeah, of course you would, because you deserve to concede it. It's a, it's a stonewaller to me. It's an absolute cast iron penalty. There's no doubt about that in my mind. Arsenal should have had a penalty here. You also have the other situation, which for me, you could even argue was worse than this. So you have this one at the end, but early in the second half, a ball's crossed into the box. And Gab I mean, if you can't see that Gabriel's shirt has been almost pulled off his back there, what is going on? I don't understand this from the referee. I don't understand how that can't be given. I, I don't understand what they're looking at. Legitimately do not understand what the referees and what VAR are looking at if that there isn't given as a penalty. It is a clear shirt pull. What has VAR looked at? What are VAR focusing on in that scenario? I, I, I think the whole of football needs an inquest. The whole of football needs to understand why this wasn't given. Everybody in football does. And the reason that everybody needs to understand is because we know they've changed the protocols on clear and obvious mistakes. But this is a clear and obvious mistake. His shirt is two-thirds off his body. Two-thirds off of his body. And it hasn't been given. And it wasn't the only bad decision tonight. In the Man United game. In the Man United game, the Bournemouth player here does not receive a red card for, to, for doing this to Donny van der Beek. He may have slipped. He, there may not have been no intent. But there's never been a rule in football that says there needs to be intent. Intent is uh, it's a bit like the last man rule. It's never existed in football. It's never existed at all. But for me, big refereeing decisions tonight. They didn't cost Man United. We won our game. But Arsenal fans, how do you feel? I know you're angry on socials. I want to get your thoughts and feelings now. Make sure like buttons are being smashed and that you're subscribing. Let's go to some of these super chats here. Uh, fair play to Newcastle. Impressive defending. I will say that. I'm taking nothing away from Newcastle's performance. Defensively, astounding. Astounding. And they are a legit team. They are the real deal, and they could make the top four. There's no doubt about it. Very, very good indeed. Uh, I'm sorry, but the refereeing was an absolute joke. Arsenal fan here and Newcastle were brilliant defensively and fair play to them, but we were robbed, is what um, e E18 has got to say here. Uh, Dan says, Arsenal fans back to blaming the refs. Zaka should have been sent off after 60 minutes. Your team weren't good enough today. Read the rule books. Dan calling out Gunas here that are asking for penalties. Uh, what is your response to that? Gunas tuning in. 
Uh, the ref needs investigating, is what Ringy's got to say here. Newcastle started time wasting at 46 minutes. How is there only five minutes extra time? Horrendous officials. Shake my head. Worst refs in the world, is what Anton's got to say. Barely 50 minutes of football played. Five minutes added. Joke is what Rob the Knob has got to say. And my guy G here, thank you for becoming an official member um, of the Football Terrace. It means a great deal to us that you have signed up and done that. Uh, 21 games left and Arsenal fans feel they're going to win the trophy. Relax, 10 games to go. Still top and I'll entertain it. It's our league to lose is what Thanos City has got to say here. City fans calling out the Gooners tonight. Uh, Terry, I'm a Chelsea fan. The ref had a shocker, but is it a surprise? The amount of terrible officiating has been ridiculous. Arsenal fans should have been worried that they're in great form and played well. Look, I, I think tonight, the one thing Arsenal fans should have to focus on is, and the Mudrik deal, by the way, there have been big calls tonight that Chelsea are actually progressing the deal for Mudrik very well, according to um, Jacob Stein, uh, Steinberg, who is a very credible journalist. But Arsenal need that Mudrik. Arsenal need that Jao Felix. If they could have brought on one or two stars, one or two highly talented players in the attack to change it up, to give Newcastle's defence something different to think about, it could have been a very different outcome altogether. It really, really could have been. But um, they, they will feel disappointed tonight after that. Burnley, I mean, Newcastle defended well, is what Nitsu Nubi has got to say here. But they tried to attack as well. I mean, they, they almost, they could, have, they could have taken the lead at the end of the first half, Newcastle. Let's not get that twisted. They had their chances as well in this game. Um, actually, there's a rule that considers intention, which is if they um, hit another player or you had the intention, uh, uh, I missed their red card either way. For me, th there isn't. There is uh, serious foul play or violent conduct, but then there is, does the tackle you make endanger an opponent? And when it comes to the Donny van der Beek situation, and we'll put the picture up again for anyone who didn't see it, he slips it before making the tackle, but he slips because he's he's... He's putting every ounce of effort he's got into trying to win that ball. The slip, followed by the power that he puts into the tackle, which if he doesn't put in, he can't win the ball, is what leads to the injury. Therefore, it's excessive force and it's endangered an opponent. You can't do that to someone's knee without endangering them. It quite literally is in the law of the game. Intent doesn't matter for an unintentional red card. Intent only matters when it comes to violent conduct. Did he mean to punch him or was he throwing his arm back to get him off of holding his shirt? There's a difference. But in tackles and challenges for the ball, intent has never been in the law, ever. And how do I know this? Because I've heard multiple referees talk about it on TV. I'm not, I'm not an expert. I've just heard them say it. 100% red card, in my opinion. You can't nearly break someone's leg and stay on the football pitch, in my opinion. You just can't do it. Uh, Terry, remember the Rashford handball? Listen, if Rashford's handball was given the other day, that has to be a penalty. It has to be a penalty. New Listen, Newcastle played well, and they, they get the point. I'm not hating on them. But this, Stonewall handball. Stonewall handball. This, this is the one, though. This is the pièce de résistance. How can VAR not look at this? The VAR's got to... This is why we need the referees mic'd. Because you need to hear what VAR says to the referee. You need to hear what's being said. Because if the referee says, yeah, I saw the shirt pull, but I didn't think he pulled in that hard, then you could argue it's not a clear and obvious error because he saw the shirt pull. If the referee says, I didn't see a shirt pull, then it's clearly an error. That's why they need to be mic'd up. I'm sorry. It's not even the bad decisions. I don't trust referees. I think VAR, the way Howard has got it working, is they're going to start protecting the refs again. It's, it's nonsense for me. It's a nonsense. Arsenal fans should be fuming with that. Uh, someone please tell me that wasn't a pen. Uh, I, mean, I, I, I listen, we're going to we're going to get Cameron on. Oh, my dizzy. We've got uh, Brandon. We've got a gal KJ coming on to join us very, very soon uh, to have their say on the panel tonight. 